Hi, Filter here. And I'm a little upset. Um, I was uh, looking at a few videos and I saw that umbrella guy. Um, you leave, uh, uh, talk about how there's some Stanford professor uh, who describes Dungeons and Dragons as white male privilege. Okay. Being a gatekeeper of white male privilege, something to that effect. Okay, I'm going to explain something. I don't know if this professor will ever see it, but you, my loyal subscribers, if anybody brings this up, I want you to consider this. And, of course, the more I say this, I'm dating myself. If not, the male pattern baldness should give it away. But 35 years ago, or so, 35, 7 odd years ago, possibly more, I remember hearing about Dungeons and Dragons. Now, growing up where I grew up, it was predominantly in a black neighborhood, or the inner city, as white liberals like to call it. We just call it our neighborhood, the hood, the whatever. Growing up there, um, Dungeons and Dragons was considered two things. A white boys game and demonic. You know, we all remember the satanic panic back in the day and how they said it was a, led into devil worship. Or in some cases, you had the parents and grandparents who would not let their kids anywhere near it. And we all know that we've seen those overly religious parents and grandparents. Th to give you an idea, I remember... Um, one family would not let their kid watch Speed Racer for the simple reason that in the theme song, it says, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. That was the reason why that kid was not allowed to watch Speed Racer. It's a very bizarre thing to say or do or to implement, but that was the case. But like I said, it was considered a white boy's hobby back in those days. And my friend, who happened to be Asian, <laughs> actually got a hold of a couple of Dungeons and Dragons books. And I thought it was kind of interesting, but I couldn't find any players. We couldn't find any players. I was so reluctant to play it because of the whole thing. And then I remember seeing uh, Mazes and Monsters. Coincidentally, very good movie. I think Chris Makepeace is in it. But you see a young Tom Hanks. Very good movie written um, from the book written by Rona Jaffe. So, I'm sorry if I'm jumping all over the place here, but if you ever see it, see it. But, back to what I was saying. Throughout my teen years, uh, role-playing games were literally off-limits. And finding people to play, again, you had to go pretty far and wide. I mean, for me to... I, I grew up in Queens. And I didn't know any bookstores, really, that sold Dungeons & Dragons books. The only reason I knew that I could get role-playing stuff was at a place called Complete Strategist in Manhattan, which was like five blocks down from, at the time, five blocks down from the uh, Empire State Building. That's the only reason why I knew that. And I remember I got uh, The Last Starfighter, um... Asteroid Chase game. If any of you have it, that's worth a lot of money. And damn, I wish mine hadn't burned in a fire. So, uh, I got a game called Warp War, which, and actually, no, I got that much, much later. Sorry. But I did get Star Frontiers, which was basically Dungeons and Dragons set in space, basically. It was made by the same company, TSR Hobbies. Same company made it. And I thought, hmm, Star Frontiers, this looks interesting. I remember picking up the FASA Star Trek role-playing game also. Then after that, I joined the Air Force. And I graduated to uh, Starfleet Battles, Traveler, and the like. Even some uh, World War II uh, wargaming uh, on a, you know, tabletop gaming. Where you get to use the miniature tanks, and and I was on the side of the Russians, and the other guys were the Germans, and we got our asses handed to us. But that's another ball game. 
Then eventually, I, uh, by the time I got to Germany back in 1987, my first base at Spangdalem Air Force Base, I saw a group of guys playing Dungeons and Dragons. I'm curious. I'm not a kid. I don't have to worry about a mom or a grandma telling me what to do, even though my mother really didn't give a rat's patootie <laughs> about what games I play. As long as I wasn't selling dope, I think that was the thing that she was actually fine about. So I go in, and I see this myriad of guys playing. Actually, guys and one gal, because it was the guy's wife. The dungeon master, ironically... A very large black dude, or half black, really. Several white guys, a couple of Filipinos, myself, and basically there was a lot of us playing Dungeons and Dragons. Now, as we were playing, we, we realized something very important. This is just a game. We got there on a Sunday, rolled dice, had fun, then when we were done, we go back. Do whatever we had. We played our video games. We didn't give a rat's patootie. Now, this isn't about keeping out women because, let's be honest, women weren't all that interested in playing. Let's, let, let's call it for what it is. Women were not interested in playing Dungeons & Dragons. There wasn't a plethora of women. Granted, women, 50% of the population. But not but 50% doesn't necessarily mean they're all going to be joining in on it. Let's face facts. Nerd culture... Is exactly that nerd culture. Those who of us who grew up nerdy, played video games, played the uh, role playing games, on uh, tabletop board war games, and a whole nine niner, anything outside of life and Monopoly. Let's be honest, you know. And we did not find that many women that were interested, and that's the key. I don't know where these professors come up there saying, "Well, oh, their gatekeeping gets women." No. Women just aren't interested in it. I use my girlfriend as a grand example. I could not get her to play a game as simple as Kingdom Hearts. And she loves Disney. But she will not play a role-playing game. She will not play anything role-playing game. She won't play tabletop role-playing game. She won't play video game role-playing game. It just doesn't interest her. Her friends aren't that interested in it. Or, in fact, I got a PS2 here from one of her friends, because she didn't need it anymore, because she didn't play video games. Throughout some of the women I've known, um, not everyone plays an RPG. They're not interested in tabletop war gaming. So this whole BS notion of um, white males gatekeeping against uh, people of color and stuff, like, that's, that's, a, that's a bunch of bull. bull. And, and another thing, this guy basically uh, put down, concerning how female characters are portrayed in a game and how somehow or another it's sexual violence. Oh, if the character is overly charismatic, it is desirable. That's sexual violence. No, if the characters say, I'm going to grab her and rape her, that's sexual violence. If the guy is enthralled by the non-player -play character into doing something like, I don't know, killing his own friends... That's not sexual violence, at least not in the sense that I see it. Ah, oh, blimey. Sorry about that. I'm just kind of uh, being distracted here. Uh, like I said, this tells me a lot that academia has very little, very little merit now. Because if this is the level of academia, I mean, what if they... Honestly, they, I don't think they have anything to teach anymore. I think they ran out of interesting things to teach. And now they're just putting together word salad along with whatever biases they had. See, my guess is this guy who wrote this, he wanted to be down with those nerdy kids, but he couldn't figure out the nuances of how to play uh, a game or something like that. So this is like his revenge. But... I've been wanting to do this video for a while, though, to be honest with you, but this article was the last straw. I'm getting sick and tired of these people trying to tell me that somehow or another, I represent some either alt-right, gatekeeping, Nazi 
for for playing a particular game and knowing full well that you can't get that many people. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 let me frame this this way. What this guy is asking for doesn't exist. You're not going to get every man, woman, or child of your, that you think of, that you deem necessary, to play a game or engage in something. It's like uh, film directing. How many, ask any woman or any high school girl, high school girl, what do they want to be when they graduate college or graduate high school? You'll find some of them want to be in the entertainment industry, but not behind the camera. You could have 50 women in a room, and I guarantee you, maybe two or three of them, maybe four, are going to say, I want to be a director or a camera operator or a film editor. That's the honest to goodness truth. I'm sorry if I'm going off on a rant here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just at a loss for words. Where did these people get off on this bull? And seriously, where did they get off on this? Do they even sit down? I, I guarantee you, all they have to do is sit and watch a game. Just watch a game. I think, or better yet, yeah, um, watch a game with your blinders off. Go in, see a tournament, and don't bitch about the numbers game. Well, there are not enough trans people in this game. Who the fuck cares? There's not enough women in this game. Well, how many women want to play? You don't have 800 women playing Halo. Well, probably total. But, <laughs> but you, you, you see what I'm getting at. Again, I can't get my girlfriend to play Halo. I can't get any of her friends to play Halo. They get bored real easy. Well, this is hard. That's what I heard. Hell, I had Starfleet uh, Command. And one uh, friend of my girlfriend's who was a Star Trek fan just basically went, I don't know what to do. Uh, just turn this off. That's what she did. And again, this whole notion that somehow or another that we need X amount of people. And this, and this is this is what some people, I think, uh, either that umbrella guy or diversity in comics put it this way. It's like a numbers game. You need to have X amount of people playing a game. You have need to have X amount of people in a room. I'll never forget, there's um, a situation I remember watching on 60 Minutes uh, about 20 some odd years ago. 20? Something like that. Anyways, it's this little company in this, uh, I think, in the Bronx. And it's this, uh, they put together these little widgets or whatever. And what had happened was, you see, they show the inside of this place. And he was talking about the regulations that the city imposes. They just impose this kind of stuff. And then... Oh, sorry about that. But I was, I was saying, you had um, New York City imposing all these rules and regulations on um, this company. And they, the, the way the regulations are set up, it was you had to have X amount of employees of an X amount of, an, of X ethnicity working at this place, at your business. Now, here's the dilemma. Sorry, I was eating some yogurt here. <laughs> now, here's the dilemma. He realized that there's only X amount of people per population that will show up. Now, the doors are open. He's not discriminating. But if nobody's showing up to the door... What do you do? And now the guy then the guy was getting fined for not having enough 
of X amount of ethnicity in his company. He can put the signs out saying, help wanted, but if nobody shows up to the door, what are you supposed to do? I've, I've laid this out uh, some years ago to a friend of mine uh, when we were discussing something like this. It's like, if you have a, it was like when they kept saying, oh, there's not a policeman, there's not a fireman. Okay, you have a hundred slots open for firemen and policemen. Now, you know, you have to have at least 13 of that 100% in there. Now, you've got 13 slots open, but two show up, three show up, four show up. Not 13, just four show up. Well, there's not much you can do. You have to say, well, we have to fill this slot in because we need X amount of personnel to do this particular job. Well, you see where I'm getting at, ladies and gentlemen. This is the crowning achievement of weird leftist thinking. They don't understand that sometimes personal want and need does play a factor in how things such as jobs, um, careers, games, gaming, uh, comics even. I mean, these people have invaded every last vestige of, let's be honest, male-dominated hobbies. All because you need to have things balance out with representation of diversity, people of color. And I've heard people basically say that diversity is basically a dog whistle for less white people. Which is a shame to if you're going to take that route. Me personally, again, I, and I, I discovered this when um, you had, I think, Kate left, who's upset that there's not enough genderqueer in the Avengers Infinity War movie. And I'm like thinking, how many, it's not that the people want gays in a, a gay character. They want the gay characters to do things in the bedroom, put in a comic book. That's what they're looking for. It has nothing to do with representation. They just want to show every last minute detail. And I guarantee you there are a lot of gay and lesbian people who like to say, hey, look, what I do in the bedroom is private. Let's leave it alone, shall we? They don't want it blurted out a little bit of daggone place. Well, that's enough of my rant. Sorry if I rambled on, but... Well, I'm Filter. I'm out.